Gene Upshaw became the mouthpiece of the Raiders, and I was, I was all ears, and boy, he could fire me up. And I can remember standing, go, going out to the field, and Gene on the sideline yelling for me to make tackles. I used to love it, and I used to yell right back at him that I'm going to do it. And then I would yell at him, you know, to, when, when nobody would get to our quarterbacks because of guys like Gene Upshaw up front there. It was just so much fun to watch. Uh, Gene Upshaw was, wasn't only the leaner on the field, he also became a leader in our town, the town of Oakland. He became like a real citizen, like a real spokesperson for the Raiders. He was seen everywhere. He was doing everything, all kinds of charity work. And he dragged his whole, t whole team. You know, we thought nothing of going with Gene in, into some schools and talking to the kids or be, you know, showing up at some uh, sort of veterans of foreign war, showing up anywhere to promote the Raiders and also to help people out. Gene was just a great leader in the community as well as on the field. The perfect guy to follow. The perfect guy to, have you, to be your team captain. It was funny where a guys like Gene, you know, was the first big guard. But you couldn't be a big guard. You couldn't be a six foot six guard. You're just too big. You couldn't move. But Gene proved them wrong. So as soon as somebody proves somebody wrong, then everybody starts doing it. And Gene, I, it was... Uh, God, for years, we had George Beeler over here, who was that older, you know, the old style looking guard, and he had the big Gene Upshaw guard. Now, the big Gene Upshaw guard showed uh, the NFL that maybe the taller you are and the better runner you are, the better guard you could be. Gene would talk all the time. He'd always be encouraging you or talking to the opponents, or, or slapping, oh, he was noted for this stuff. Oh, back when that first started, so many, whatever you would want to call it, it wasn't slaps, there were hands, because everybody was all bandaged up. Maybe that's why he had, that they did that. But Gene would never stop talking. He talked to the referees, talked to the opposing coach, talked to, uh, he talked to his opponents, or talked to the teammates. Gene was one big talker. And as he went on in life, representing all the players in, in the Players Association. He was still a big talker. We're getting ready to play the undefeated Miami Dolphins. We had just beat the Steelers. We're going down there to play them in the AFC Championship game. We thought we could beat them. We had very good records against the Dolphins, and Gene was going around the locker room telling them that we beat the Dolphins the last four or five times we played them. We are going to go out there, and we're going to win $35,000. That's what this game meant to us. He's going around with a magic marker or whatever they call them in those days, magic, and writing 35000 on everybody's pads. Like, 35000 to me? Are you kidding with me? That was twice as much as it probably I was making. And we could win that in one game. And Gene actually thought that money you know, that money thing was going to be the key to us going out there and playing this unbelievable game. Well, it really didn't help us. <laughs> the Dolphins were pretty darn good. And we went in and we looked at the money on the arm and we lost it. We didn't win it. But uh, Gene would try anything and he thought that that, that would do it. So he took a, he took a shot.